Um, I'm Peter Keating. I'm a senior writer at ESPN the magazine, and I've been looking into concussions for ESPN since 2006, when we studied uh, when we were doing basically when back when we were doing a study on uh, injury and pain in athletes. Uh, that research led me into looking at the NFL Concussions Committee, and since then I've written about concussions in football, uh, as well as other sports like soccer and women's sports and hockey. Um, and kind of you guys talked a little bit um, about how Mr. Goodell has made some pretty sticky situations. You deal with Dallas in a lot of different uh, sides and uh, interests. Can you just talk about you know, what, what is the Dallas thing when, when looking at this concussion prevention and safety? Well, Roger Goodell is in a very uh, tight position. You might actually say he's walking a tight rope. Um, he has to balance the interests of player safety, public opinion, and the legal hazards of the NFL, all while doing his primary job, which is to maximize the bushels and billions of dollars that the league brings in. And so uh, he can't look back and say that the research that the league did on concussions, which basically said it was okay to go back into the game after getting a concussion, and that there was no evidence of cumulative problems or worsening injury as you get more concussions. He can't look back and say, oh, that's all accurate, that's okay, because it's, it's, it's common knowledge now that it wasn't. But he also can't acknowledge that it was wrong, that there was mistakes, because the league is getting sued by more than 4,000 of its former players. So. He's trying very hard to move ahead and keep the focus on reforming the game as it moves into the future, but the, the, the past keeps, keeps knocking at his door. Uh, you guys also talked about how over the past few years, the league's already been making changes, whether it's uh, lim or maybe kickoff changes or implementing the steering rule or providing some single penalties, which usually leads to breaking rules. Um, can you talk about any, any changes that you see the NFL in the near future that are going to try to prevent this? Well, one change that would be bad would be an 18-game schedule, which the league wants, but, but uh, the players do not because by the end of 16 games, they're already suffering from uh, injuries all over the place. Um, but I think one really important uh, change that has taken root and which we're going to see actually grow in importance is that when players come out, they have to be uh, cleared for, re they have to be evaluated and cleared for return to play by medical professionals who are independent of the team. And I, I think we're actually going to maybe head towards a situation where players who are, have concussions or suspected of taking serious hits to the head have to sit out for a mandatory amount of time. Maybe just take them out for one week uh, because uh, you know, we're getting to the point where, 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 where even stronger measures have to be taken. The commissioner suspended a lot of players, used the power that's available to him. He's even getting backlash from, uh, getting a lot of backlash from the players, but the concussion rate's still going up in football. And uh, if we can just conclude with just all these changes that you, you mentioned that have happened and you think may happen in the NFL, how do you think this, this uh, increased media spotlight on, on concussions will affect sports from, from football back in? Well, I think it's good to get the word out there about what concussion is, that it's a brain injury, not just a hit to the head. Uh, what it takes to get over a concussion, which is usually complete rest, um, it, how concussions are, are caused. They can be caused by not just violent collisions, but by uh, smaller sort of what they call subconcussive impacts can build up also and cause trouble. So I think all from a kind of angle of what are concussions, what you can do about them, uh, the media impact is hugely helpful. I also think media impact is helpful by looking at what's going on in specific sports, like uh, what kind of headgear should helmet, uh, sh sorry, what kind of headgear should hockey players wear? Uh, where do concussions come from in soccer? Is it tripping and is it collisions or is it heading the ball? And is football doing enough with its rule changes to protect its players? And I think the final area where the media can make a difference is by really bringing to light um, how the leagues behaved in the past when they should have been taking this very seriously. The NFL had a concussions committee from 1994 to 2008. That committee put out paper after paper after paper in a re respected research journal basically saying its own protocols were okay even though they were at, what, uh, at odds with what uh, international conferences and most outside researchers uh, had declared. And the NFL concussions committee tried to discredit the work of other researchers. N now the NFL has changed its tune on that but I think stories like the ones we've done can bring to light stories about players and what's happened in their lives, but also about how the leagues have behaved.